Well, quite simply, um, it's the right thing to do. You know, I have three kids and I want my kids to have, um, you know, the same appreciation and enjoyment of uh, the environment and the world we live in that I got to have. Welcome to Washington Post Live. I'm David Ignatius, a columnist for The Post. Today in our series, The Path Forward, we're going to be taking a close look at electric vehicles. Uh, and our guest today is Mark Royce, who's the president of General Motors, uh, who's leading their efforts to become a, a significant player in the electrical vehicle market. We're going to be talking about all the particular details that are important as we think about uh, EVs, charging, uh, their range, uh, all of the, the issues that you as, as viewers and consumers are going to be thinking about. But first, I just want to say, uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. David, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and, and humbled to be part of this today. So thank you very much for having me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. Great. So let's jump right in. You've uh, plugged GM's future into electric vehicles, if I can say that, uh, in a serious way. You've said that you want to sell a million of these vehicles by 2025. You've said that GM will roll out uh, its new uh, uh, Chevy Bolt uh, electrical vehicle, uh, I believe, this summer for a, a price of $34,000 or less which would underprice uh, some of your competition in the market. My question for starters is, that's an enormous change for GM. How are you going to pull this off? How are you going to make what's in effect a, a quite different company over this uh, next four years? That's, that's a great question. You know, I mean, if you look at our EV history, it goes all the way back to, um, uh, well, it, let's just say a long time ago, but the, the first real commercial vehicle that we went to market with was the EV1 in the 90s. And, you know, we did um, uh, the Volt uh, and then um, the Bolt, and then now we've got the Bolt EUV. So we've had um, uh, in the ELR for Cadillac actually along the way, but those were um, a lot of learning uh, entries that we did around batteries and vehicle integration. Um, and we've learned a, a, a ton, uh, both from our consumers uh, that, that are buying those, but also, you know, what we wanna do and how we wanna do it to get scale, and frankly, uh, part of part of what we're doing here is to get everybody into an EV. And to be able to do that, um, as you might know, there's friction points. Um, there has been in the market uh, around price, around uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, and, and frankly, scale. And you know, General Motors, uh, if if no one else, has a, a incredibly broad portfolio with all of our brands globally and different price points. So um, we decided a couple of years ago that um, we weren't going to get into a large hybrid or plug-in hybrid play, but rather go right to uh, pure battery electric vehicles based on all the learnings we've had and do it in a way that uh, gets scale for people, um, both, both on the battery cost, the vehicle cost, but also uh, build excitement into those vehicles for all the different tastes and customers um, that we have today. So we decided to vertically integrate uh, many of the big aspects of getting scale around costs, uh, including the cell itself, the battery cell itself, the pack, uh, and then um, finally the vehicle, which uh, you, you know we've got pretty big manufacturing scale worldwide as well. So uh, leveraging all of that and our R&D capability, uh, we decided to go all in. Um, so that was the beginning of it. Let me ask you about a particular part of this uh, technology, and that's your your battery, Ultium battery, I think you, you call it. With electric vehicles, the, the battery obviously is critical in terms of uh, how far you can drive the vehicle, um, its its usefulness to the to the to the to the consumer. Tell us about this battery technology. What's different about it? Uh, how how quickly you think it's coming on, and what the implications are in terms of how we think about electric electric vehicles. Sure. If you if you look at um, the scale piece of this, the Ultium uh, platform, which uh, we 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 first really uh, told the world about it on EV Day, but then followed it up um, in the pandemic with our CES presentation um, 
that, that we gave here not too long ago. And really it's a, um, it's a modular cell construction, whether it be prismatic or cylindrical, um, we can, we can uh, adapt uh, the LTM platform to handle either one of those cell physicalities, which is very important uh, as we go global because there are parts in the world that simply don't have one or the other. So when you look at that and you look at what um, uh, we're doing internally, uh, we can actually manufacture our own cell itself uh, and, and develop chem chemistries very rapidly on site in, uh, in our tech center in Warren, Michigan. The reason why that's important um, is as we develop the chemistries for that, we can go back and forth and validate uh, the vehicle life and the battery use uh, in, the, in the validation piece of that laboratory as well. So um, the lithium ion piece of it um, is the first gen of Ultium, uh, Ultium packs that you'll see going into um, the Hummer EV that'll launch this fall, and then the Lyric, and then um, we have a you know we have a lot of vehicles behind that obviously to be able to do a million vehicles in that time frame, uh, but also we're converting a lot of our plants. Um, you know we're in a joint manufacturing venture with LG, uh, which we're finishing up the factory in Lordstown, Ohio. Uh, which will add about um, you know 1,100 jobs to that area, and you know it's converting, frankly, to uh, Voltage Valley, and so that's a very exciting uh, piece of it. We're also uh, looking at um, big uh, factory conversions, like the 2.2 billion dollar factory in Hamtramck in in the city of Detroit, uh, which is really good, and um, and so you know those big investments are really important to get scale, and so the chemistry itself. Uh, is actually backward uh, compatible, which is um, extremely important because when we start with the first gen of Ultium, um, we, we really um, we really can can update uh, those chemistries and also uh, backfeed those into the, the products as they begin to roll out. So it's not a static uh, development piece of it, and uh, it's, it's extremely important as we look forward uh, to the future chemistries, which will come. Uh, rapidly after LTM one. So let me ask you how that would work. If I buy a new uh, Bolt uh, this summer, uh, next year, and it's got your current the first generation of this battery technology, and as you say, there'll be improvements. Uh, let's let's imagine a couple of years from now, there's a significantly more efficient battery that would let my car run much longer on a charge. Can I sub out the battery that I had and get get a new one? Do you have, do you have provisions for that? Oh, well, you, we, we do, and uh, the Bolt EUV will be the last um, battery pack off of our um, previous gen uh, chemistry, David. So the uh, the next gen uh, with the LTM platform starts with Hummer and then uh, continues onward. So everything past Hummer uh, will be the LTM platform, and that's entirely possible. And in fact, um, today. Um, I'd like to announce that we're going to enter into a, a joint development agreement with um, a company called uh, Solid Energy Systems, which um, that is a, a very exciting uh, program for us because it's um, the development of solid state batteries or lithium metal batteries, as they're called uh, commonly. So that's a big breakthrough. So for something that we're going to actually prototype, build a prototype factory, uh, in Massachusetts, in, in Woburn, Massachusetts, we'll actually build those prototypes. And then when we go into production for the next gen of Ultium, which will be shortly after that, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to backfeed and be backward compatible to all of the platforms that carry Ultium. So that's a big announcement for us. It's very exciting. I'm announcing that today um, in this forum, and we couldn't be prouder to, to, uh, to, to, to get into that joint development agreement with SES. So, Mark, that sounds like a significant announcement, and I, I want to ask you to say a little bit more about it. First, explain sure. what that solid state battery would be like. Tell us a little bit about uh, your partner that you're going into the, into the joint venture with. Uh, and uh, tell us, if you can, how you think this may change the economics, the value proposition of your broad effort uh, with EVs. Sure. Um, if you look at um, where we're going to launch LTM with Hummer uh, and, and Lyric and the first uh, gen of that, we're looking for solid state and the battery chemistry developed for that uh, to cut um, to be about 60% of the cost of our batteries today. 
and with double, most importantly, double the energy density. So when you think about the massive percentage of what batteries cost in electric vehicles today, uh, we're moving down that, that curve uh, very quickly. And really what we're talking about there is um, something that's been thought would be a, a great thing for batteries for um, a few years, but the commercialization of that uh, around um, uh, some of the problems that have led to uh, you know, avoiding that chemistry um, and without getting into too much detail and, and disclosing what we're doing there. Um, but but those, um, those new uh, lithium metal pieces of the batteries um, are really uh, anode and cathode centered. And you know, with that doubling of the energy density at 60% of the cost, we can offer and put, um, again, um, the, the availability and the accessibility of electric vehicles to the very lowest end of the market from um, a cost standpoint and value standpoint for the customer. So when we talk about that um, and, and, and looking to build that prototype factory with SES in 23, that's a year after we launched uh, the Ultium One first gen platform. So it's very, this is very rapid. And in fact, we've tested um, and, and and developed that chemistry um, with SES uh, as an investor uh, since 2015. So we've been doing this for a little while. We've got um, 150,000 simulated miles uh, on the lithium uh, metal uh, cell uh, in our tech center um, uh, facility in R&D. And so this is happening very, very fast and it's, it's incredibly exciting. It can change, it really can change the whole calculus of adoption, accessibility, and having people actually um, have electric vehicles as their primary vehicle in terms of range, cost, and, uh, and being able to do that. So it's, it's a breakthrough um, that we're, we're very excited about and we're very, uh, very hopeful for, for the future, the very near future of that. Let me ask if you could give our viewers some uh, simple handle on that. When I go shopping for an electric vehicle, I, I see some models of plugins that uh, say that they can go 34 miles on a charge. There's one sure. that sticks in my memory. There's some that go longer than that. For your new battery technology that you've been describing with us, that you're going to be working on with your new with your new partner, how much greater um, uh, distance can we expect um, taking the current uh, batteries that are available just as X, I won't say 34 miles, but just the X, is it, you're going to come up with 2X, 1.5X? What, what's it going to, what difference will it make to the, to the consumer? I'll give you some range numbers. Oh, that's a great question because, you know, it's a bit confusing when you look at plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and you can plug a vehicle in and get 34 miles, which, you know, that's what you're speaking of right there. Those actually carry um, both batteries and internal combustion en engines on them. And so what we're talking about now is going to a complete uh, battery electric vehicle. So if you look at the Bolt that we're, um, uh, the Bolt EUV and the Bolt um, that we're launching out of our Orion, Michigan plant um, right now, actually I'm driving one right now, you know, we, we can get almost 260 miles of range on, on that chemistry, which is a, a, a previous gen chemistry which is pretty relatively typical for you know a relatively small vehicle at a very competitive price point. If you look at what we're going to do with uh, Hummer and the first Ultium platforms, we're, we're approaching 450 plus miles on those battery packs, which is you know pretty close to internal combustion engine fuel ranges. And then if you look at what a solid state um, uh, lithium metal uh, uh, cell chemistry can do, we're talking about 500 to 600 miles of range um, in, in those battery packs. So this is, um, this, these are big leaps, but of course you have to decide um, as a customer and a maker, uh, what level of range you really want and what you're willing to pay for. For, for people that, that don't, don't drive very many miles or drive to and from work as their primary vehicle, um, you know, those ranges um, on Bolt, Bolt EUV are very good. Uh, you top it off at night, you know, over 70% um, of our customers that drive bolts uh, don't really need a charging station. They, they charge at home uh, and they use the charging station at home. And for that car, we're giving away uh, the charging stations uh, at home for home installation with the purchase of those bolts. So we're removing those friction points, but that gives you sort of the, um, uh, the stepping of, of, of range 
And of course, if, if you wanted to, to build a, a low roof sports car, the Altium platform can give you that type of a roof lane when we, when we turn um, the modular cells on their side and get the car down. And we may decide that we wanna use that power and that capability, not only on range, uh, but also for, um, for fun, um, for performance, you know, uh, so you, you got all that flexibility um, that you can use, and it really de depends on the segment, the price, and the customer on how you use it. Those are pretty startling uh, range numbers, and I just want to ask, since you mentioned it, uh, what Im improvements in performance you might be able to get applying this new battery technology? Are there, are there any estimates you could give us about uh, some metric of, of, of sure. improved performance that, that might be possible? Well, we came out when we launched uh, and showed the Hummer for the first time, we said about a thousand horsepower and, and zero to 60 at, at three seconds or under. Um, I don't think the power is, is, is limited when we get into these type of um, uh, battery packs that, that can deliver that. What becomes the, the limiting factor is how much can you really get to the ground? And so how you architect the car, how you put that power uh, to the road is extremely important. And because you don't have torque converters or a uh, sequential uh, shift, uh, um, you know, uh, th those are very different um, direct drive, instant torque. Uh, that, that feeling of an electric car is like no other. And uh, everything happens um, with a lot of satisfaction for the driver, a lot of fun um, in most cases. And you know uh, we have something called one pedal driving on the bolt, which you really don't have to use the the, the brake pedal unless you're you're, you're in a, an emergency situation. But you can drive the car all the time uh, in regen using the regen uh, of the of the electric drive unit to actually slow the car and stop the car, and use the gas pedal just to to um, you know accelerate uh, or off the gas pedal you decelerate and activate that uh, regen which in fact um, charges the battery. So there's all kinds of really fun things on EVs that you know you frankly can't get on an internal combustion engine car. So it's a, it's a whole new uh, experience. I, I, I like your focus on the fun factor um, as a, opposed to the eat your broccoli factor, uh, because I have a feeling that's, that's gonna be crucial in the marketplace. Let me, speaking of, of fun factors, um, ask you about your, Add during the Super Bowl for electric vehicles, which had Will Ferrell, a comedian well known to us, who who was uh, all spun up about the competition with Norway, and talking <laughs> about how we're going to crush those losers. Um, the luge being a sled that Will Ferrell imagines is is a big deal in Norway, but there there is a, a serious issue here which is uh, Norway's commitment to, to electrical, electric vehicles is so significant that 54% plus of new vehicles registered in Norway last year were electric, according to statistics that they gather. That's compared to 2% of the market share in the US. And so I wanna ask, re realistically, how are we gonna compete with with those losers who were who, who were who were um, at levels of of electric electric vehicle vehicle purchase uh, that are just so far from from where we are. It's a great question, and and, and you know that, that the actual spot was meant to um, provoke a lot of those questions and thought. It's very un, un GM. We we use that opportunity to introduce our new logo. Um, you know, we took some chances there, which you know we're going to do, and. Uh, we, we actually had a great relationship with Norway um, around that whole spot too. We had a lot of back and forth. So it was, it was a lot of fun. The serious piece of that is, um, is, is a big question because we've got you know, a huge car park of used vehicles that are internal combustion uh, engine based. Uh, but we also have all the friction points that I touched on a little bit, which was um, you know, sort of the range anxiety piece of that. You know, can I have an electric vehicle for my, my only car? Can I drive from Detroit to you know, Cedar Point or SeaWorld, um, and, and can I charge my car along the way? There's a lot of great things that um, we're doing, uh, uh, including uh, an app that lays out the whole charging station um, infrastructure. It actually tells you the most efficient um, route to, to, to drive with your, your EV. Those are big enablers for people to get past those pain points. 
But I got to say the public policy piece of this, which is very encouraging with the new administration around the infrastructure um, of, of charging stations is, is crucial. And so, you know, they're, they're well aware of that and they're working very hard on that. And, you know, we have a massive um, gasoline uh, petroleum infrastructure. There's no reason why um, companies like Shell and some of the other uh, oil companies can't participate in the infrastructure with EVs. I also talked to um, some of the CEOs at the Edison uh, 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 group the other day around uh, some of the announcements they made, which was a commitment to build out and help build out uh, infrastructure uh, of charging stations too. And so you've got that, you've got um, our commitment to EVgo, which is tripling the number of DC fast chargers across the United States. That's happening. There's a lot of things happening here uh, that will help that. The other piece that I mentioned was value and, and getting everybody into EVs from an accessibility, from a utility standpoint, has to be um, different answers in the cars themselves for carrying families and, and, and you know, still providing what the automobile has always done, which is freedom. Freedom and passion uh, as a reflection of who you are and, and what your values are. Uh, in every in any segment of the automobile industry is so important. So we want to we want to make sure the vehicles we deliver are beautiful. Um, they are still a very passionate uh, decision uh, to purchase, and they provide all the freedom and utility um, that we know our customers want. So when we get into those things and we start reducing those friction points and solving them from our customers, which we are, um, really magical things happen on adoption. So. The big country, it's got a lot of different customers. There's rural customers, there's uh, urban customers, uh, there's different congestion in some of our bigger uh, urban uh, uh, cities. So, and the infrastructure is, is widely varying. So we have to have those kind of things. And when we talk about trucks, uh, trucks um, are, are sort of the, the workhorse and, and so popular right now and will be for a long time. Um, we have to solve the equation for uh, duty cycle, and, and uh, you know the whole uh, the whole way uh, trucks are used, the versatility of that. So um, that's what we're doing. Let me ask you about the culture change that's that's implicit here. Uh, you're a, a car guy. Looking at your at your bio, I, I know that you were a test car driver. You told me before we started, you still get out on the on the test track. Um, you were responsible for GM's racing program at one point in your career, I think. The love affair that Americans have with their, I'll put in parentheses, gas-powered uh, cars and trucks, um, is, it is a part of our, our, of our culture. And uh, the, the attempt to change uh, aspects of that uh, could easily run into, run into resistance. And I'm curious about how you are planning your marketing strategy so that your EVs aren't seen as, you know, again, the, the eat your broccoli, this is good for you, we're going to save the environment. That's, those are crucial goals for all of us, but you could run into cultural resistance. How are you going to deal with that problem? Well, um, I don't think, you know, uh, David, that this happens overnight, number one. So we're not going to throw a switch and, and, and have um, everybody driving EVs next year. Uh, so they'll, they'll be, um, and, and there's fleets involved here too. There's not just retail customers, but there's there's big fleets, corporate fleets. So we're working very hard on things like um, Bright Drop, which we, we just talked about at CES for the first time, which solves you know the retail customers big pain points of delivering uh, packages and goods into highly congested areas and doing it with an EV, but doing it with a connected set uh, of deli final delivery last mile. Um, uh, creative solutions. So there's that piece of it. There's also, um, you know, most people haven't actually driven an EV. So if we can get people into vehicles and, and, and drive them, and, you know, we've got great dealer partners, we've got a great network of dealers that are ready uh, and, and, and really great um, uh, thoughts around how we do that. And a lot of that um, changes uh, as we look at this. The connected customer is extremely important for us. In fact, we've got a whole great team of people working on the connected customer, delivering uh, things that people haven't even thought about or, or know they want, um, along with their car experience. So we've been, in, you know, we've been an OnStar for for 20 years or so, um, and so that that's been a great 
source of safety, uh, connectivity. Uh, we deliver, um, you know, things like the, the Washington Post or the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or any of that content we deliver into the car so people can listen to it. All those breakthroughs um, not only uh, help um, people, you know, with the desirability of EVs and a connected customer, but also, you know, provides, um, you know, all that information along with the freedom that an automobile has always um, provided. So, you know, uh, I think it's it's a big change. The industry is really changing. In fact, this could be um, the real tipping point of when we get scale, um, value, and accessibility um, for everybody, which hasn't been true. And so uh, I think the people, um, like the, our Bolt customers are the most loyal Chevrolet customers we have. And there's a reason for that. They absolutely love the vehicle. They love what it delivers. Um, and, and, and you know, so that's the opportunity. So we look at it as a huge opportunity. Um, I'm not sure, you know, uh, going out and, 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 and talking to customers about what the pain points are, taking that back, solving the pain points, and then looking at the desirability of some of the future models that we're going to introduce in a clinic environment has told us that people are ready to do this. So there's a lot of data behind this. And Mark, have you gotten any pushback from your dealers? Uh, and will these new electric vehicles be sold through your existing dealer networks or Will you have dealers that specialize in EVs and, and try to make that a, a market niche in their areas? Well, David, I think that I think a, a couple of publications have have, have um, covered this fairly well, and you know the dealers look at this um, as a growth opportunity in 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 addition to internal combustion engines um, that they sell today. So uh, the dealers that are participating in our um, our 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 transformation. Uh, to an electric vehicle future, uh, realize that growth potential and are very excited about it, and are very excited about you know the the models that we're going to do, uh, which is you know the Cadillacs. You, you've seen some of the the Cadillacs we're doing. You've seen the the Hummer GMC Hummer. Um, you, you're going to see more Chevrolets here shortly, so you're going to see all those fill out the brands. And again, this is a growth opportunity for General Motors, our dealer body. But it's going to change the way people um, buy vehicles, and they're frankly a big voice in how that needs to change, um, along with uh, the voice of the customer, obviously. So we're taking those voices and and greatly simplifying how people buy cars, and our dealers are great partners in that. So it's an exciting time, I really got to say. So we have just a couple minutes left. I want to close with a, a fundamental question, but it's one that comes through every. Uh, answer you you you've uh, uh, given t today. Uh, is it fair to say that you and your the uh, CEO are essentially betting GM's future on the success of electric vehicles for your company? Um, I think uh, I think it's a bet. It's a well calculated bet. Um, but we always bet our future um, on our company. I mean, this is a long lead capital business with. Um, you, you know, you, you really have to have your 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 intelligence and, um, and and know the market better than anybody else for these bets to be successful. You know, we've we've cut our, our development times from you know 50 months down to about 26. Um, we're going to be very agile. We are going to be very uh, market um, you know driven, and so we've got that agility both with the portfolio we have today and also the portfolio that's coming. So. We will be able to flex those portfolios to what the market tells us, but we we definitely bet um, the future on battery electric vehicles, not um, uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles that carry, frankly, two propulsion systems. We, we haven't put money into that part of what people are saying is some sort of in-between road. We're going all the way. We're going there as fast as we can. So that's the bet we have. But we've done it in a very agile way where we have flexibility that's based on our customers and our market. So hopefully that, that helps. Mark Royce, thank you for an absolutely fascinating conversation about part of the future that uh, most of us are just beginning to, to, to think about. Uh, thanks for explaining it in, in such detail. We hope you'll come back as this uh, experiment rolls forward. I would be honored to, David. Thank you so much for having me today. It's a, it's a rare opportunity for me, so I, I really appreciate you giving me that opportunity. 
to, to tell people and yourself uh, with some great questions, by the way, of what we're up to. Great. We'll, we'll see you in the future. Tomorrow Thank uh, you. at 1 o'clock on Washington Post Live, we'll have an important look at the past year that we've been living through. Coronavirus one year later with Dr. Scott Gottlieb and Leanna Wen, who's written often uh, on the subject, also, also a, a doctor. And join me on Friday uh, with Nobel Laureate for Chemistry, Jennifer Dudna and Walter Isaacson, who's captured the extraordinary story of Doudna's uh, work on gene editing technology, known as CRISPR, uh, in, in Walter Isaacson's latest uh, best-selling biography. Uh, that's on Friday. Thanks for watching today, and we'll look forward to seeing you the rest of the week.